What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to add materials to our floor plan model in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you're looking for this full series, um, you can find it in my Blender architectural modeling tutorial section. I will link to that in the notes down below. But what we wanna do is we wanna start adding some materials to this model. So let's go ahead and let's toggle off our windows, our doors and our furniture, just so you can see what we're doing right here. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in a texture and apply it to the floor. And so the first thing we have to do is go find a texture or a material to bring in. And so there's a lot of great websites for this. Um, the one that I use probably the most is called 3dassets.1. And the reason I do that is because this actually allows you to search multiple different websites at once. Um, so all you have to do is type in something in order to bring it in. So let's say for example, that we wanted to bring in wood floor. Well, all you have to do is type in wood floor and there's a ton of different options in here of different floors that you can bring in. So for example, let's say that we wanted to bring in, um, we'll go with this wood floor 009 right here. And make sure that you, you do review the license of any textures that you bring in. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna download the 2K map for this floor just by clicking on it right here. And then I'll go extract it in the folder and show you what it looks like. And so if we open this up, remember that it comes in with a bunch of different maps. And these are things that you can set up as a part of your material to make them more realistic when you render them. So you can see how this comes with a color map, a displacement map, a normal map and a roughness map. And if you double click on this preview, you can see what the material is supposed to look like when all of those are set up. But what we need to do now is we need to import this into Blender. So we're gonna go back into Blender and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into the shading tab right here. So the shading tab is gonna give us control over um, the nodes that go into this material. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna select my floor right here. And actually we can go ahead and toggle our walls off just so we can take a look at this. But what I wanna do is I wanna tab into edit mode and I actually wanna create a new material that I can apply to this surface. So let's go ahead and click on the new button right here. And so notice what that's gonna do is that's going to create a new material in your node editor down below that we can use in order to use all those different maps. And so the first thing I'm gonna do in the way that I set up most of my textures is I actually use an add-on called Node Wrangler. So if you go to edit preferences and you look for Node Wrangler, you just wanna make sure that Node, Node Wrangler is enabled. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me access to a tool where if I click on this principled BSDF shader and hit Control Shift T like this, that's gonna open up a folder and you can come in here and you can select the different maps. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna select the color, the displacement, the normal and the roughness. And you can just do a shift click in order to select all of those. I'm gonna click on the button for principal texture setup. And so notice when I did this, what this did is this actually set up a material automatically um, over here in my node setup. And so it set up the mapping so I can adjust things like the size of the material as well as the different uh, maps so things like the normal map is now plugged in here, things like the displacement map, those are all set up. But I have a little bit of a problem. And the problem is if you look at this floor material right now, this piece of the floor is really stretched and it doesn't look very good. So the reason for that is because we haven't set up the UV mapping for our floor yet. And so UV mapping is something that can get really complex or it can be really simple. In this case, we're gonna make it really simple because this is just a simple floor. Um, there's nothing, there's no crazy unwrapping that needs to happen or anything like that. So basically what UV mapping is, is it's uh, taking a face or a series of faces and telling Blender how the material should go on the surface. So what I wanna do is I wanna jump into the UV editing tab for a second. And the UV editing tab is going to give me the ability to select these surfaces right here. And notice how when I select them, it's actually making boxes that correspond with the different areas show up on the left-hand side of the page. And in this case, all I wanna do, because this is really simple, is I just wanna go into a top-down view over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit Z and go to material preview mode. But I just wanna select these surfaces right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna go into the UV option I just wanna click on the option for project from view. So basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna take your view that you have right here and project it straight down 
onto our surface. We'll notice how when we do that, now our mapping is in here properly. And so if I was to do a shift click and select all of these, notice how all of those objects now show up in here. And this is actually showing the way that those, um, those UV mapped areas kind of come together. So for example, let's say that I was to select just this object right here. Notice how when I move this around, this is changing the way that the mapping is working over here. So what you can do is you can select objects over here and then you can select the UV mapping on this side of the page and you can do things like scaling it up so if I scale this up, for example, notice what that's doing is that's actually um, adjusting the size of the object over here, and but the size of the actual image itself is staying the same. Well, what that means is that means that now I can move this around if I decide that I wanna do that in order to make this material sit on this surface better, like this. I can also do things like rotating this. So if I rotate this 90 degrees, like this, so if I type in negative 90 degrees and hit the enter key. Notice how the direction of the material that's being applied in here is different um, because we went ahead and we changed that. And so practically, if we go back into shader mode right here, you can see how this material is now mapped to this surface like this. However, let's say that we have a setup like this one where we want multiple different materials applied to this object. Right? So if I toggle my walls on, for example, I might not want this material to um, continue throughout the whole space like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this face, my floor face, and I'm going to split it up. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna tab into um, edit mode real quick and I'm gonna select this surface. Well, I'm just gonna hit Control R and add an edge loop. And in this case, I have my snapping toggled on, so I can actually snap to different locations with this edge loop. So in this case, I'm gonna click right here in order to split this surface. Notice how this is how the snapping gets turned on. I can link to a video that talks about how to do snapping down below. But now, what I've done, if I toggle my wall back off, is now I've split this surface into more faces, right? So these faces right here are now split off from these faces over here. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna take these faces over here and I wanna apply a carpet material to them. So I have a carpet material that I've downloaded from 3dassets.1, but now I wanna add it to this object. So we wanna make sure that we've tabbed into edit mode for this floor right here. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle my walls back off. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna select these two sections right here and I wanna add a new material slot. So remember that objects in Blender can have multiple different material slots um, to have different materials associated with those objects and then you can assign them to different faces. So in this case, I'm gonna click on the plus button right here. I'm gonna add a new material. I'm gonna go ahead and call this carpet, but I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. So I'm gonna select this object or this uh, shader and I'm gonna do a control shift T and I'm gonna go find my carpet material. So in this case, I just have a carpet material that I downloaded, and I'm just gonna pick up those same things. So my ambient occlusion, all of these maps right here, and I'm gonna click on principled texture setup. That goes ahead and that sets up my carpet material. Well now, what I can do is for these two faces, I can select them by clicking and doing a shift click, and I can take those two faces, click on the carpet material, and click on assign. Well, notice what that did is that came in here and that applied a different material to these two faces, which doesn't really make sense when you look at it right now, but it makes a lot more sense when you turn your walls back on. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna go into my UV editing and adjust the editing for those two spaces. And so notice how this came in here kind of big. There's two different ways you can fix this, right? The first is you can come in here and you can adjust the scale of the material. So if I set my X and Y scale, to two like this, notice how this is getting smaller, right? If I set it to three, it'll get even smaller. So you can kind of make this do whatever you want just by typing in different values in the scale in your mapping, which is which gets set up when you do the uh, node wrangler, wrangler texture setup. Alternatively, if you didn't want to do it that way, you could also go back into your UV editing and select these two faces right here so notice how I can select those individually of these faces and I can just select them both 
and just scale them up like this. So if I decide that I wanna do that this way, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me a lot more control because I can also move these around in order to adjust the way the carpet material sits on this surface. So you can really do that either way. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer in this situation, it's just kind of what works for you. And so now if we go back to our shading, toggle our walls on, you can see how we now have our different materials on the floor. All right, so now let's apply some textures to the exterior of our building. This gets a little bit trickier because you have to be a little bit careful in the way that you do this. So because up till now we've been dealing with our floor, right? So our floor is just a face with no thickness applied to it. However, um, the exterior of our building is actually a um, wall that has thickness applied to it. Well, the problem with this is let's say that we were to come in here and we were to apply a brick material. So we're just gonna call this brick and I'm just gonna download a brick material from Ambient CG, which I found searching 3D textures or 3D assets.1. And so we have to be a little bit careful because notice what happens is, I'm gonna go ahead and do a Control Shift T right here. We're gonna bring in that brick material. And so notice how when we bring this in though, and we apply the brick material to our object, nothing really looks very good like at all. And the reason why is because our UV mapping isn't set up. Now you have to be careful with something like this though, because right now, if I was to tab into edit mode and I was just go to UV editing, and in this case, we're just gonna select all of the faces for this object. We're gonna go to UV, we're gonna click on cube projection. So that's basically gonna take this and project it as if it was a cube, which is a fast way to do this. Notice how it automatically sets all of these up. Well, the problem is when we did that, when we applied that brick material to all of these surfaces, notice how it's being applied to the exterior and the interior. And we can come over here and we can select all of these and again, scale them up or down to adjust the size of the brick. So that's pretty easy to do, but we've come in here and we've actually applied this material to too many faces. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to tab back into edit mode. And we can go back to the shader tab right here. But what I wanna do is I actually wanna create another material in here. And I'm just gonna make this a normal material and we're just gonna call this base material. I'm actually going to hit A and just assign that base material to everything because I don't want that brick material coming in and being applied to the inside of our object. So now we've got our UV editing set up just by using that box or cube projection right here. But now we need to apply this material to just certain faces. And so the easiest way for me to do this is I just go into the front on view. So I'm just gonna go into the front on view click the tab key and I wanna go ahead and I just wanna select the faces that I want in here and I'm just gonna assign that brick to those faces like this. And so notice how we actually have an issue in here where some of the brick is not being applied in exactly the same way. Like it's really close, it's kind of a subtle thing. And so if we look at this, notice how the brick material is slightly different. That's because if we were to come in here and look at our uh, face orientation, right here. Notice how these faces, um, because all faces have a front and back inside a blender, right? Well, these two faces are facing the wrong direction. Well, what that means is that means that they look a little bit different, the materials being applied to them differently. So I'm just gonna do a shift click in here and I'm gonna go into mesh normals. I'm gonna click on flip. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna flip the direction that that face is facing. Notice how we've got this issue in a few different places. So um, it's really not gonna be that big of a deal in areas where you're not really looking at them and rendering them. But in general, you like to have those normals facing outward like this. But now I've applied a brick material to this exterior face right here. And I'm just gonna go around my building and keep doing that. There may be a better, more complex way to do that. But for a simple building like this, I found just manually adding these works just fine. So I'm gonna add a brick material here. We'll assign the brick material here. And we'll assign the brick material here. And then if I ever need to change the brick material, um, it's probably fastest just to come in here and adjust the scale of the object. So in this case, right, I would just change this to one and a half and one and a half inside of the node setup. You don't have to do it that way, but that's a pretty good way to do that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna toggle my windows and my furniture back on like this. 
just so we can take a look at what we've created. And so from here, you can kind of do whatever you want. So if you wanted to come in here, for example, and select some of these walls or these uh, surfaces right here, let's say we wanted to paint these. Well, we could just tab into edit mode and just select these faces right here, add a new material. We can just change the color of that material and again, notice how we're getting a paint material in here. Um, I actually like to leave a base material in here when I'm applying multiple different materials. So, so what I wanna do is we'll just call this white paint. And we'll assign this, I'm gonna move it up, but then I can take these three surfaces, for example, and take this blue paint and I can apply that right here. So you can apply different materials to different surfaces inside of Blender really easy using these material tools. All right, so remember that you can download the sample floor plan and follow along at the cgessentials.com slash floor plan. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, feel free to leave them down below. And then we're gonna continue this series by talking about how to create some different kinds of renderings from this model. But leave a comment below if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.